I'm David Murphy. I'm a physical therapist. I work for community hospital in the outpatient setting. Uh, I'm a Tai Chi practitioner myself, uh, and that includes being certified in Tai Chi for arthritis. So I'm going to advance the slide here. Uh, welcome to the virtual environment. Um, just a brief introduction to the class today. Uh, the balance class includes seated and standing postures, weight shifting in both seated and standing postures, and whole body movements. These are basic principles of Tai Chi. Uh, the movements are slow, repeated, multidirectional, uh, and they optimize core, the spine from the shoulders down to the hips, and the extremities, arms and legs, the strength and mobility. Uh, they improve balance and your coordination. Uh, and also, with the practice, you actually stimulate relaxation. Now, the objectives for today that you'll learn proper seated and standing postures, both stationary and dynamic, uh, to allow safe and challenging practice to optimize, uh, to improve your balance. Um, you'll be able to perform the whole body movements, modifying the movements according to your ability uh, to improve mobility of core and extremities. And thirdly, uh, you will integrate the postures and movements to perform up to three Tai Chi movements, all the while stimulating relaxation. So before we begin, I do have three rules of the class. Number one is be safe, safety. I want you to be successful in practicing these exercises and for example, uh, during the standing posture, use a stable chair, or if you use an assistive device, use the assistive device. You could have a uh, counter uh, or a wall behind you, close behind you, in case you did lose your balance. So of course, I would rather you not lose your balance. Um, as I guide you through the exercises, I think you will be able to maintain your balance. Uh, you want to avoid painful movements. Um, modify the exercises according to any symptoms that you have um, and your ability. Ability means your strength, your balance. If you feel fatigued, uh, if you feel too unsteady, take a break. Uh, we will be doing the exercises repeatedly. So if you sit down and take a break or uh, just need to stand up, move around a bit, um, I'll take breaks myself. So you can take breaks with me or as many as you need. Uh, during the seated exercises, if you feel like you need some back support, like your hips ache or your low back aches, you can scoot back in your chair. You can use the back support, take some stress off the hips and the back and still continue the exercises. I'll be performing the postures both ways, just so you can uh, have an example. Um, if you have, a painful or weak limb when we're practicing the movement on that side, you can visualize. Uh, use your mind, be mindful of visualizing the weak limb moving as the more able limb moves. Okay, so the first two rules, number one, you're safe. Number two, you avoid causing yourself pain. Uh, number three, you gotta practice. I have to practice myself. Quite frankly, I could practice more. Uh, you can practice these exercises daily. So with that, uh, let's begin. We'll begin with the seated posture. Now, if you have a chair at home with or without arms, I've got one chair with arms. Uh, and a chair without arms. So I'm going to start using the chair with the arms and the chair should not have wheels. The chair should not swivel, a stable chair. So I will change the angle I'm sitting as I go, just so you can get different perspectives. The seated posture, 
sitting forward on the edge of the seat, your feet and knees are hip width apart uh, or shoulder width apart. You're, you're seated upright, your shoulders are relaxed, your chin is slightly down or you're tall through the crown of the head and your gaze is as if you're looking at the horizon. So if you find yourself looking down, just correct so you would be looking at the horizon as if you were at the beach on a clear day. Uh, you're not sitting completely upright. You can relax the spine a bit. Instead of sitting in extension, you relax a bit, tucking the tailbone slightly. The feet are slightly back. So if you did lean forward to stand, you could easily center yourself over your feet to stand. If the feet are too far forward, you wouldn't be able to get up. So there is your seated posture on the edge of the chair. From here, we will start some of the whole body movements. Hands rest on the thighs. Again, shoulders are relaxed, chin is slightly down. First movements we will do are for the lower quarters. So your right foot, what you're going to do is you're going to push down against the ground with the ball of your foot to raise the heel. And you're gonna slowly lower the heel, slow, smooth movements. And slowly raise the heel and lower as if you're pushing down against the earth with the ball of your foot. As a result, the heel raises. Three repetitions of each movement. Now raise the left heel, I'm sorry, I get my sides mixed up sometimes. Raise the right heel as we have three times. Keep the heel raised, move the knee in and move the knee out. Gently moving the knee side to side rotates your hip. You're seated, so you're non-weight bearing. A gentle warm up for the hip. That's a little more than three times, but that's okay. So lower the right heel. Now left heel. Raise the left heel slowly and slowly and smoothly lower the heel. And again, two, slowly lowering the heel, three, and raise the heel one more time. Maintain the heel raise, move the left knee in and out as if you're rocking side to side on the ball of your foot. This also extends your toes gently and rest. Now we are going to combine the two movements. One movement is vertical, one movement is horizontal. We combine the two to make a circle on the ball of the foot. Circles, all movements in Tai Chi are circles. So raise your right heel, move the knee in, lower the heel, move the knee out. Raise the heel, knee in, lower the heel, knee out, circling on the ball of the foot. Now, with the heel raised and centered reverse direction, the knee goes out, lower the heel, move the knee in, raise the heel, knee out, knee in, raise the heel, lower the heel. Excellent. And on the other side, your left side, raise the heel, move the knee in, lower the heel, move the knee out. As you get more comfortable with the movement, you can smoothly repeat. Raising the heel, lowering the heel, moving the knee out, moving the knee in, and let's reverse. With the heel down, move the knee in, raise the heel, move the knee out, and continue for two, and three. Excellent. Now, Tai Chi, uh, these are actually what are called Qigong movements. Qigong translates to working the Qi or exercising your energy. And these are exercises that have been around for thousands of years, say 5,000 years. And they were developed for health and wellness. So these are the preparatory exercises or the warm-up exercises. So we're going to continue with Qigong-like movements. The right foot, lift the right foot slightly off the ground, maybe one inch off the ground, point your toe, touch the tip of the toe. Lift your foot and touch the heel and slightly lift the foot to touch the toe 
and heel to toe one more time heel to toe and rest good and smoothly transition to lift your left foot point the toe to touch the toe lift the toe and touch the heel and alternate touching toe to heel and three and rest to progress that exercise you will lift the right foot one inch off the ground or slightly off the ground and extend your knee touch the heel forward lift the foot slightly flex the knee touch the toe behind and slowly and smoothly heel forward toe behind and a third movement and rest smoothly transition to your left extend your knee touch the heel lift flex the knee touch the toe and heel to toe heel the to toe that's three times very nice now i said in the introduction these are both static and dynamic postures while you're lifting one foot be mindful of the torso staying upright as opposed to leaning to lift the foot now if you have to lean a little bit that's fine Again, if you have fatigue or the hips ache or the low back aches too much, you can scoot back in the chair and you can still practice the exercises. You have more external support. It restricts your movement slightly, but that is fine so you can match your ability. I'll remain on the edge of the chair. Third lower quarter movement, cir leg circles. So again, as you lift your right foot one inch off the ground uh, this looks like a static posture we're not moving much but in fact it is dynamic in the sense that you take the support away of the right foot your body tries to tilt to the right there's no more foot on the ground there what you do is you maintain the upright torso you are strengthening your core you're working on the hip strength and now the hip coordination Put that right foot down, let it rest a little bit, but switch to the left foot. Lift the left foot one inch off the ground. Now from here, gently swing the leg forward and backward, like a pendulum, swinging from the knee and let the leg hang. Now move the foot in and out or side to side. This is an excellent exercise, rotating your hip and rest. The hip can get tired. Your back can get tired. Again, if you need to rest, go ahead and put your foot down. The muscles recover in seconds. Back to the right foot. Lift the right foot, gently swing the foot forward and backward. Now, side to side. The foot goes towards the opposite foot and away from the opposite foot. Like a pendulum, side to side. The hip, the ball, of the femur in the socket of the pelvis is rotating. Excellent mobility exercise for the hip. Now, again, what we're going to do is we're going to develop, progress this into a circular movement. We're gonna combine the north-south and the east-west movement, and we're going to circle the leg. So right foot first, lift the right foot off the ground, Move the foot toward the left foot. Now move the foot back, out, forward, and in. And circle as if the ankle is tracing the inside of a barrel hoop. Three times and reverse. If you're not sure which direction is reverse, go the other direction. And as long as you're safe and rest the leg, you're not causing yourself pain and you're moving, you're doing it correctly left leg lift the foot off the ground move the foot toward the right foot move the foot back out forward and circle two and three and reverse opposite direction two and three and rest very good now what we'll do is we'll switch to the standing posture standing posture and again, if you need to rest, 
sit and rest in the chair, or you can stand upright and rest. What we're going to do is standing posture. The feet are hip width apart, a little wider than normal. So normally we stand, we, we'll stand with a narrow base of support and uh, we can hang our hands on our hips. We can lock a knee. And uh, I always say this is standing like a teenager uh, with my own son in mind. Um, it's actually very efficient. We can stand like this a long time, but we don't get any stronger. So feet are hip width apart, a little wider than normal, hip or shoulder width apart. Now from here, you can always adjust a little bit, a little wider, a little more narrow. Ideally, the feet are parallel. It's okay if the toes point out a bit. Now from here, we'll unlock the knees. So a little difficult to see, but from a side view, my knees are locked. When I unlock my knees, my weight shifts slightly toward the heels. So I don't want you to bend the knees much. I just want you to go from fully extended knees to slightly flexed or unlocked soft knees. Then from there, take your middle and index finger and put it right on front of the hip, which is the groin or the inguinal crease. That is your hip, the ball and socket joint or the gua. We wanna relax the gua. So the knees are slightly flexed. Press into the inguinal crease and allow the hips to flex a little or allow the inguinal crease, the groin to fold a little. So the hips and the knees are slightly flexed. Feet or hip width apart, slightly unlock or slightly flex the knees, slightly flex the hips. Next, slightly tuck the tailbone, flatten the small of the back, very small movement. Now, when you do that, you'll feel your weight shift towards your heels. Maintain the knees and the hips slightly flex, the tailbone tucked. Allow your weight to shift forward so your toes lightly grip the ground. So from the side, again, standing upright, unlock the knees, slightly flex the hips or relax the gua. You'll notice my torso leans forward slightly. That's fine. And then tuck the tailbone slightly. The weight shifts back slightly. Allow your weight to shift forward so the toes, the tips of your toes, all five toes rest on the ground. There, you're centered forward to backward and you're in the proper standing posture. So one more time, I will review this again and again. So feet are hip width, slightly flex the knees, slightly flex the hips, very subtle tucking of the tailbone or the sacrum, arms relaxed by the side. Same thing, shoulders are relaxed, chin slightly down and your gaze is on the horizon. From here, the same lower quarter postures or whole body movements. We're going to do lateral weight shift. If you keep the torso upright, a plumb line with the button line of my shirt, and both feet stay flat on the ground, you will not lose your balance, shifting your weight side to side. So think of pushing down on the right foot to push your center over your left foot. Again, as long as the torso stays upright and the feet are flat, you will not lose your balance. If you lean, then you can go too far and lose your balance. So, shift your weight over your left leg and push down on the left foot to shift your weight to the right foot. Slowly to the left and to the right. That's weight shifting side to side or lateral weight shift in your standing posture. Again, go ahead and stand up straight. If you need to, you can move around. Just standing upright will take the pressure off of your thigh and hip musculature and your muscles recover quickly. From the lateral weight shift, 
feet hip width apart, slightly flex the knees, relax the gua, slightly flex the hips, tuck the tailbone. As the weight shifts toward the heels, allow yourself to shift forward so the tips of the toes rest on the ground. Now shift your weight toward your left side, feet stay flat. Now to put a little more weight or a greater percentage of your weight over your weight bearing, or for right now, the left leg, raise your right heel, lower your right heel, raise the heel, lower the heel, raise the heel, and lower the heel. Now come back to center. As I mentioned earlier, use a chair to steady yourself. Again, you're safe, number one. Now shift your weight, just adjusting my stance so I can use the chair to steady myself. Shift your weight over the right leg, raise the left heel. The ball of the foot stays on the ground. The toes extend, lower the heel, raise the heel, lower the heel, raise and lower the heel. Three of each movement. Anytime you can just stand up, move your feet a bit, Get back into your stance, slightly flex the knees, the hips, tuck the tailbone, and shift your weight over your left foot. Raise the heel. Now with the heel raised, move the knee in, move the knee out. Same exercise as we did seated, but of course, now we're standing. And three. And lower the heel. Shift your weight to center. Continue to shift your weight over the right leg, raise the left heel, left knee in, left knee out, rotating the hip, internally rotating, externally rotating, or opening the gua one more time, and rest. Come back to center. Now, as we did seated, we're gonna combine the vertical movement of the heel going up and down and the horizontal movement of the knee going side to side to circle on the ball of the foot. So, feet hip width, slightly flex the knees, slightly flex the hips, a slight forward lean of the torso is fine, slightly tuck the tailbone, allow the weight to shift forward so the tips of the toes rest on the ground. Shift your weight to the left, raise the right heel, move the knee in, lower the heel, move the knee out. Raise the heel, knee in, lower the heel out, and circle on the ball of the right foot, and reverse direction. Raise the heel, knee out, lower the heel, knee in, two, and three. Very good. Now come back to center. If you're fine maintaining the stance, do so. If you need a break, please stand and Take the pressure off of the muscles. You can continue to shift the weight over the right leg, raise the left heel, move the knee in, lower the heel, knee out, and circling on the ball of the left foot. Two and three, and reverse. Raise the heel, move the knee out, lower the heel, knee in, and two and three. Excellent, and rest. Stand up. Uh, you're welcome to sit at home or just move around on your feet a little bit. Uh, that is a warm up exercise for all the muscles of the leg that move the ankle and the foot. A warm up for the articulations, the tendons, the fascia, and the muscles. The nerves and the muscles coordinate while maintaining the proper standing or seated posture. Now, again, I did give a brief introduction uh, regarding how much we would get done today. Uh, this is a practice I've been uh, working on since the late 80s. Um, and quite frankly, you're never finished. Uh, if this is your first introduction to exercises based on Tai Chi principles, welcome. And I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, what we will do is we will proceed with uh, core and 
upper quarter motions. We'll do them standing and then seated. I said we would get to th up to three Tai Chi movements. Uh, we'll get one and we'll see how much time we have left. But for now, we'll finish warming up the spine, the torso, and the shoulders, and out to the wrists and hands. Standing posture. From a normal stance, feet hip width, slightly flex the knees, slightly flex the hips, the slight forward lean of the torso, tuck the tailbone, relaxing the small of the back. Your chest is relaxed, shoulders are relaxed, arms are slightly away from the body, as if you have a small space here. The example my teacher used early on was, imagine a sparrow's egg, maybe an inch in diameter, is under your axilla. You don't want to crush the egg, and you also don't want to drop the egg. So that's proper position of the arms. This is too much to remember in one class. Uh, these exercises will be included in printed instructions that will be uh, sent to you after the class. And I will keep reviewing these. So the knees are slightly flexed, hip slightly flexed, tailbones tucked, chest is relaxed, arms relaxed. Chin slightly down in the gaze on the horizon. Cross the arms on the chest. Keep your chin stationary or your gaze forward, and you're going to move your left shoulder forward. And if your left shoulder moves forward, your right shoulder moves back. And you're going to alternate. Right shoulder forward, left. You're moving within your ability. I don't want you to rotate as far as possible where your breathing is compromised or limited, I want a mid-range rhythmic rocking motion. If your head is stationary and your torso is moving under your head, that means your neck is rotating. So this is a, an exercise to rhythmically rock side to side, rotating every level of the vertebral column from the sacrum to the mid-neck. This is an exercise you can practice for two or three minutes. The rhythmic rocking quality helps you relax. Now, bring the arms into a small circle forward, as if you're holding a baby. And every now and then I'll call this exercise rocking the baby. Because what do you do when a baby's crying? You rock them, hoping they'll go to sleep. That rhythmic rocking quality stimulates relaxation. You can further bring your arms out in front with about four inches between your fingertips and the level of the hands about your heart and continue this rhythmic rocking rotation, spine rotations. Now, this is a lot to think about. You can scan your posture while you're practicing that your knees are slightly flexed, your hips are slightly flexed, or the gua is relaxed, your tailbone's slightly tucked, your chest is relaxed. Though you're holding your arms up forward, your shoulders are relaxed, you're not hiking the shoulders, the scapula are relaxed, the chin is slightly down, gaze on the horizon, and rest. Good, okay, so that's spine rotation. Now, I'm going to switch to the seated posture for spine flexion and extension. Now, you can maintain the standing posture, that's fine. But to review the seated posture, seated on the edge of the chair, or for example, seated back in the chair for added back support, feet and knees are hip width apart, hands rest on the thighs. Here, you've got the support of the seat. Spine flexion and extension. You focus on the position of your sternum or the breastbone. You raise the chest. Doesn't go very far. And I don't want you to inhale to raise the chest. I want you to extend the spine, meaning breathing is not associated with raising the chest. Then to flex the spine, you sink the chest. You can let yourself slump. I usually don't tell people to slump, but. It's normal movement of the spine. And with this exercise, we exercise 
raising the chest to extend the spine, sinking the chest to flex the spine. Uh, allow yourself to move through that limited movement, sinking the chest and raising the chest. Again, work your mid-range movement. I don't want you to force as much flexion as possible or as much extension as possible. You should not be straining. Sink the chest, raise the chest. Now, as you sink the chest, the shoulders come forward. And if the shoulders come forward, the elbows, wrists, and hands come forward over the knees. Your head can move forward along with your torso. And then you raise the chest. As you raise the chest, the shoulders move back. If the shoulders move back, the elbows, wrists, and hands follow. The whole body moves, even though you're seated with chair back support or seated without chair back support, the whole body moves as the chest sinks, the shoulders, elbows, wrists, and hands move forward and raise the chest to extend the spine, sink the chest to flex the spine. Now, this is retraction of the scapula, pulling the shoulders back and sinking the chest is protraction of the scapula, the shoulders move forward. Now we will elevate the scapula. As you raise the chest, raise the shoulders. As you sink the chest, allow the shoulders to relax down with gravity, as if you've got weights on the hanging from your elbow, tractioning your scapula down slightly. Raise the chest and the scapula, lower the chest or sink the chest and lower your shoulders. And raise the chest, lower the chest, Elevate the scapula, lower the scapula. Excellent. Now, again, we combine the vertical movement, elevation and depression, and the horizontal movement, protraction and retraction, to circle the shoulders. We'll do this seated and then in standing. From here, again, feet and knees are hip width apart. Hands rest on the thighs, the low back is neutral or the tailbone, sacrum is lightly tucked, chest is relaxed, shoulders relaxed, chin slightly down, gaze on the horizon. Now let's start by raising the chest and raising the shoulders. Here, move the shoulders back, opening the chest, relax the shoulders down, sink the chest, and move the scapula forward with the sunken chest. Raise the chest and the scapula, the shoulders together, shoulders back, down, forward, up, back, down, and forward. One more time, circling. Again, circles. All the movements in Tai Chi are circles. And rest. Very nice. Okay, now standing. We're going to combine the whole body movement of the spine rotating, the spine flexing and extending, the scapula moving with wrist movement. So feet hip width apart, slightly flex the knees, slightly flex the hips, tuck the tailbone, relax the chest, relax the shoulders, arms slightly away from your side. Allow your weight to shift forward so the tips of the toes rest on the ground. If you're too far forward, your toes will grip the ground. If you go further forward, your heels raise. If you go further forward, you start walking. That's how we walk. We keep falling forward, uh, but we keep catching ourselves one foot after another. Uh, if you are too far back, your toes will raise and you see, saw my reaction there. Uh, don't do that. Um, Meaning, when you are, your knees are slightly flexed, your hips are slightly flexed, the tailbone slightly tucked, the weight shifts toward the heels. As I said before, you weight shift forward so the toes touch the ground. From here, we can do forward, backward weight shifting. So weight, shift your weight forward till the toes grip the ground. You feel the toes grip, you don't go any further. The heels don't actually raise off the ground. Shift your weight back only to the point where you feel the toes relax inside the shoe. Now, don't do this. If you go too far back, don't extend 
because you end up losing your balance. What you are better off doing is from the standing posture, you shift forward the toes grip, shift back. And if you bend the hips slightly, your weight will come back to center. So you use your hips flex and you flex the hips rather than extend the hips. Okay, it's tricky, but to practice, standing posture, feet and knees hip width, slightly flex the knees, slightly flex the hips, tuck the tailbone, relax the chest, shift the weight forward until your toes grip, and shift your weight back until the toes relax. Maybe they lift a little off the ground. Shift your weight forward and the toes grip, shift your weight back and the toes relax. One more time, forward to the toes grip, back till the toes relax. Very good. Now, I did segue into weight shifting forward and backward in the standing posture. Let's get to the wrist movements. So from the standing posture, slightly flex the knees, the hips, relax the chest, bring the hands up forward, interlock your fingers. You are wrapping the fingers around each other. You're not gripping, just formed, nice and relaxed. The hands about the level of the heart. Now, what you do here is you keep the palms together and gently flex one wrist, meaning one wrist goes up. Here is my right wrist up and the left wrist goes down and the left wrist up and the right wrist down and smoothly move the wrist side to side. Wrist movement, flexion and extension. I've got the painful left wrist, left elbow and left knee. For whatever reason, over the years, those are the that's the side of the body that takes most of the uh, wear and tear. So I do feel a little pain here, so I don't try to go any further. This wrist I can I can stretch. So work within your ability, pain free movement. Now, from here, what you're going to do is you're going to we did the vertical movement, flexion and extension. Now we do the horizontal rotation. The right wrist moves forward and the left wrist moves back, and the left wrist forward. Equal and opposite forces. One wrist is forward, one wrist is back. Go ahead and rotate gently within your ability. What you're doing is you are rotating your forearm, spiraling, circular. Again, circles. Now again, we're going to combine the vertical movement and the horizontal movement to circle the wrists. This one's tricky. So again, if you need to take a break, go ahead and stand up and just march in place a bit. Now, again, the feet are hip width apart. Slightly flex the knees, slightly flex the hips. Let's go ahead with uh, interlocking the fingers. Now, right wrist is up. Now move the right wrist forward. When the right wrist goes forward, the right elbow goes forward, the right shoulder goes forward. Your spine rotates. Now lower the right wrist and the left wrist is up and you move the left wrist forward. If the left wrist goes forward, the elbow, shoulder are forward and the spine rotates to the right. Right wrist up, roll forward, left wrist, roll forward. Wrist circles. You can move in a very small movement. I'm moving in an exaggerated range of motion just so you can see where the whole body moves. So, wrist circles. Now, here's the trickiest one of the day. Reverse. Whatever direction you think you were going, go the opposite direction. So again, you can move in very small circles, whatever is within your ability. And rest, good, very good. Now I am amazed how fast time goes when I practice. 
I hope you're enjoying the class. Again, if you need to take a rest, go ahead and take a seat. Um, the chair, as I mentioned, can have arms or no arms, uh, whatever is best for you. Uh, the seat surface is best uh, a flatter surface. This seat kind of has a dip to it, actually makes it a little more challenging to keep yourself upright. And of course, there are no hand or armrests on this chair. It's a bit lighter. It's a little less stable than that chair. Uh, so the chair without arms, seated forward on the edge of the chair, feet and knees, hip width, interlock the fingers, and right wrist up, right wrist forward. Now, the right wrist goes forward, and the whole forearm is forward, not just the wrist. That's a subtle difference. But this is where you should feel the wrist and the elbow move forward together, and that's where you get the rotation, the whole body movement, even though you're seated. The left wrist moves up, move the left wrist forward. Right wrist moves up and forward. And left wrist up and forward, right wrist up and forward, and rotating the wrists. Wrist circles and reverse. So with the left wrist up, move the left wrist back and the right wrist up and the right wrist back. And if this feels like you have no idea what you're doing, that's okay. I've been uh, through that feeling with most of these exercises over the years of practice. Um, one thing that is essential is that uh, we have a source, uh, some source of teaching. Um, I have several forms that I practice of Tai Chi and uh, and I continue to go to my teacher who uh, every time my teacher during a class asks me what I'm doing, I know the answer. I say, I don't know, because he's gonna tell me something I don't realize or that I'm not aware of. So uh, my point that if this is your first set of Tai Chi uh, exercises, you, uh, you are just beginning. You're at the tip of the iceberg, which my grandmaster had a presentation in the 80s at a presentation, he said, uh, uh, the martial arts, the Tai Chi is like an iceberg. You're at the tip of the iceberg. And he said of himself, after 35 years of practice, he was standing in the water on the shore of the iceberg, like shin deep. And then he pointed out 90% of the iceberg is submerged. Uh, and somebody asked, well, how do you finish? And uh, you know, how do you get all this done? And he said, you don't, you practice. And through the practice, we are strong, more coordinated. Uh, we stimulate relaxation. Our balance is better. So, so now uh, let's get to a Tai Chi movement. I think we have time for two Tai Chi movements and it will be forward and backward weight shifting, what's called the forward press. So I'll be at an angle here. And again, the feet are hip width apart. Slightly flex the knees, slightly flex the hips, tuck the tailbone, and the arms are relaxed by the side. The hands are not completely relaxed. So you don't want your hand just to collapse in like this. You also don't want it to be rigid, just formed. Fingers have a small space between them. Feet and knees hip width, slightly flex the knees, relax the gua, tuck the tailbone, gaze is on the horizon. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna weight shift forward till the toes grip. As the toes are gripped, the hands move forward following. Now you weight shift back till your toes relax, very little weight shifting backward and the hands move behind, slightly behind the hips. 
Weight shift forward, the toes grip, and the hands follow. The whole body moves. Shift your weight back, and the hands follow. Forward weight shift till the toes grip. Weight shift back till the toes relax. Now, to progress, weight shift forward, the toes grip, the hands continue up forward, the wrists lead, as if you're lifting with the wrists to the level of your shoulder. If you have a stiff shoulder, only come up to a point where your shoulder doesn't elevate for sake of getting the hand higher. This is where you modify according to your ability. So the arm comes up. If you start to hike the shoulder because the shoulder's stiff, the hand, that's as high as the hand goes for this exercise. The other hand can go a little higher. Just be mindful of the differences. Again, visualize the limited limb doing what the more able limb can do. Okay, again, feet and knees hip width apart. Slightly flex the knees, slightly flex the hips, tuck the tailbone slightly. I think I did say I would repeat this again and again and again. And that's what it takes, rep repetition, to get the basics with the proper posture, then you can proceed with the exercises. And shift your weight forward until the toes grip and the hands move up to the level of the shoulder. Now shift your weight back, so the toes relax and the hands follow. And shift your weight forward gracefully. The hands move as if moving through thick air. Shift your weight back, the toes relax. Again, if you feel like you shift too far back, go ahead and lean the torso forward to regain your center of gravity, to regain your balance. Shift your weight forward until the toes grip, the hands come up. This is number one. Now, shift your weight back slightly, the toes relax. Lower your elbows and the palms come back forward of your shoulders. Now, shift your weight forward till the toes grip and then the hands again follow the body. Allow the palms to relax parallel to the floor. Shift your weight back, lowering the hands back down. Forward press. Shift your weight forward. One. Shift your weight back, two, forward, three, and back, four. Forward press, one more time. Shift your weight forward, the toes grip. Shift your weight back, the toes relax. Shift your weight forward, the toes grip. Shift your weight back, and the toes relax. Good, forward press. Now, again, let's, let's actually adapt that to the seated posture. I, I do need to check my time because, again, I enjoy these exercises and uh, I have uh, gone through a class and not had a timer. Uh, and if I don't check it, next thing I know, somebody tells me, uh, by the way, you've been going for about an hour and 10 minutes when it's supposed to be an hour. So let's do one more movement and we will do it seated. And it will be uh, the forward press seated. These exercises can be modified according to your ability. So seated, this is the chair with arms. So the seated posture, feet and knees are hip width, the feet are back. So if you did lean forward, you could balance over your feet. Hands rest on the thighs. Chest is relaxed, shoulders relaxed. Gaze is on the horizon. Lower the hands down by the side of the thigh. Weight shift forward seated. Relax the gua or hinge from the hips, allowing your torso to lean forward slightly. Again, the hand follows the torso. And shift your weight back. And the chair with arms, you move back outside of the arms of the chair or just to the arms of the chair. Shift your weight forward, hinging from the hips. Hands follow the body. 
Shift your weight back and the hands again. Follow the body. And for forward press, weight shift forward and the hands come up to shoulder height. Shift your weight back, lower the elbows and the palms face forward in front of your shoulders. Two hand press, shift your weight forward and, and press. Sink your chest, relax the chest as the palms press forward. Shift your weight back and the hands follow. On the count, shift your weight forward, one. Shift your weight back, two, lower the elbow. Shift your weight forward, three. Shift your weight back, four. One more time, shift your weight forward, one, two, three, and four. Very good, come back to the seated posture. And there you go, your forward press standing and forward press seated. So most of the exercises we've done today were what are called Qigong exercises. And those are, for example, circling the ball of the foot, heel to toe that we actually did seated, spine rotations, spine flexion extension, combining with the movements of the scapula, and then Wrist movements, those are repetitive, gentle, smooth movements. And those are what I would term as more warm up or preparatory exercises or more uh, Qi Gong like, working the Qi, exercising your energy. The last movement we did was forward press. Now, all the movements in Tai Chi, whole body movement, the weight shifts forward, the arms follow the body, the weight shifts and the arms follow. The movement is circular. And while the circle is not so obvious, you're coming up, circling, down, and pressing. Now that move was introduced to me by my first teacher during a uh, warm up for a class. And we were doing what's called push hands, where I push against him and he yields, and he pushes against me and I yield. And it's how you practice feeling the energy of another practitioner. Well, I thought I had him. So he pushed me and then he relaxed and I pushed him and I, I was thinking I've got him. So I'm pushing and I'm pushing and I'm pushing. And then all of a sudden, uh, what he did was he, he came back and he did this motion. And next thing I knew, I was pointing my toes, trying to touch the ground because I was airborne backwards. So all the movements of Tai Chi have martial application. Uh, tai Chi is a martial art. It's a sequence of movement based on the principles of principles we've been using today. The posture, whether you're seated or standing, the so, slow, smooth movements, whole body movements, and all the movements are circular. So if you pursue more classes in Qigong and Tai Chi, those are the common principles you will find. So thank you for joining me today. Uh, what I want to do is finish with the closing salutation and then we can take questions if we have time. Uh, so standing, your feet closer together. This is not the hip width apart. To close the class, your, your left hand in an open palm. Again, the palm is formed, the fingers are together. That symbolizes friendship. You slightly tuck the thumb and that's humility. This is your open palm. This is the shield. This is what you would parry with. The right hand, flex your fingers, gently wrap your thumb, and that's the fist or the weapon, a formed but relaxed fist. Bring the weapon and the shield together 
And this is a salutation of respect to the knowledge, to my teachers, to your teachers, and to your practice. So practice safely, avoid painful movements, modify the exercises according to your ability, and the third rule, practice. And I'll do the same. Thank you. I do. We have, we have a couple of questions for you. Okay. So the first question is for people with osteoporosis, do you have tips for them on how to do those exercises? Yes. Um, again, it's uh, your guide would be your, your symptoms. Um, but of course, number one is safe practice. You, uh, again, safety. It's uh, the bottom line is you practice with the necessary support you need to avoid losing your balance. Worst case scenario, falling. Gravity is a law, so um, avoiding the falls. Um, now, also, for example, when you are flexing the spine, uh, when we're in the seated posture or the standing posture, you're sinking the chest. That is flexion of the spine, and that puts some compression on the vertebral bodies. Um, with severe osteoporosis, um, uh, compression fractures can occur, and you would want to avoid forceful flexion. So if you really, really pulled down with force, that would put perhaps too much pressure on your vertebra. Um, in the absence of pain, you should be fine. But if performed correctly, you will not put too much compressive force on your spine. Uh, that is to say, when you sink your chest, you're just relaxing with gravity. It's just the body weight. If it hurts, don't don't relax further. In fact, don't relax quite that far. And you should be fine going in the extension direction. Uh, for your hips, uh, again, your your guide is your, your symptoms. So if you're having pain, uh, modify your seated posture or uh, take a break from the standing posture if that's when you're feeling the symptoms. So those, those are some basics regarding osteoporosis. Thank you, David. Another question, do you have advice about maintaining balance if a person has spinal stenosis? Uh, practice, uh, being as active as possible. Um, so in maintaining your balance, uh, without a specific type of exercise program uh, would be being as physically active as possible. If you have such a condition that you're limited in your ability to, to stand and walk and sit for periods of time, for example, sitting forward, as I mentioned, uh, you're strengthening your core if you're sitting up in a neutral spine. If you have uh, spinal stenosis um, and you're asymptomatic, you can go ahead and asymptomatic, meaning uh, you don't have pain or the pain's mild. Uh, the pain is localized to your back. The pain is not making you wince. Um, you can practice the exercises as we did here today and you will gain strength. Um, for example, from the, from the standing posture, you, uh, as standing up normally, you lock your knees. Your muscles aren't working very hard. Um, but to maintain your strength and your balance and coordination, simply unlocking the knees with the feet hip width apart, your quads have to be active. Uh, you maintain that for 30 seconds, a minute, you're gonna feel your quads. They might get a little shaky. They might burn a little bit uh, with the knees slightly flexed, the torso leans forward slightly, the core muscles are activated, the hip muscles are activated. So if you're standing in line at the grocery store, uh, Unlock the knees, slightly flex the hips, and you'll be strengthening right there. Um, if you do have increased pain with those postures, then modifying to the seated posture or practicing a limited amount standing. When the symptoms become too much, you modify to sitting on the edge of the chair. And then the other option is seated back with the chair back support. You're sitting with chair back support. But if you still sit yourself upright, you're still active in the core. Then you can practice the 
leg circles, cir uh, ankle movements, spine rotations, again, according to your symptoms. Thank you, David, so much for taking the time this afternoon to teach this class. We really appreciate it. And with that, that concludes our Tai Chi for Balance class. Thank you, everybody who joined us this afternoon. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.